Mackenzie Johnston with Cattle News Central, bringing you your April 26th cattle industry headlines, brought to you by Central Confinement Service. With over 35 years of experience, Central Confinement Service offers turnkey design and construction on livestock facilities. If you'd like to check out the variety of beef facilities that they have to offer, head on over to their Facebook page. CCS, they can develop a system with you that will maximize your investment and multiply your returns. For an estimate on a new or remote modeled facility, go ahead and give CCS a call or you can learn more on their website at www.sencon.com. That is C-E-N-C-O-N. Dot com. We are also sponsored by American Beef Producer Magazine. They offer in-depth articles on a wide variety of topics within our industry. They feature award-winning photography and so much more within their publication. If you would like to learn more about the magazine, maybe possibly get subscribed, check out some of their recent issues. All you got to do is click on the American Beef Producer link above in the caption. That's going to take you over to their Facebook page where you can do just that. American Beef Producer Magazine, guiding beef producers for over 25 years. And finally, uh, we are also sponsored by AgRisk Advisors. They offer risk management programs to livestock producers all across the West. Whether you are concerned with price or weather risk, AgRisk Advisors, they are here to help. With current day market fluctuations, you and I both know there is nothing more important than locking in a price floor on your cattle that has been proven time and time again. So if you would like to learn more about an LRP, go ahead and reach out to an advisor today. So Texas A&M University released an analysis of the updated Cattle Price Discovery and Transparency Act on Monday. This analysis is very similar to their original analysis of the um, of the Cattle Price Discovery and Transparency Act that was first introduced back in November. In the first analysis, Texas A&M provided the expected cost of the bill, assuming various costs per head. But the updated bill is so open ended that the analysts couldn't or they didn't want to estimate the cost. There is a chance that it could cost the industry more than the original bill. With that being said, the analysts do stand with the belief that this updated bill will cost the industry hundreds of millions of dollars. So essentially, in this in this analysis, they basically echoed what the economists talked about in um, in their analysis of the bill that I reported on yesterday. On, uh, regarding the price, regarding what this is going to cost the industry. Um, it's basically the same, what Texas A&M believes it will cost the industry and what those economists believe it will cost the industry. The impacts of this bill could be much greater than the original bill, all depending on how the, ad, how the Secretary of Ag uses his discretion, his discretion provided in the bill. An example is given in the analysis that if the Secretary of Ag were to set the initial mandatory minimum negotiated volume threshold as high as 50% across all regions, and you and I both know we have a better chance of the tooth fairy showing up for brunch tomorrow than that actually happening, but if the Ag Secretary did do this, Texas, New Mexico, uh, uh, Texas, New Mexico, and Oklahoma, that region, it goes from an additional 1.7 million head of cattle traded negotiated trade to more than 12 million head from 2022 to 2026. So we all know the Ag Secretary is not going to do this. He is not going to set all those uh, levels at 50% across all regions. However, I think what this example shows is that there is room to move up with these negotiated cash thresholds. Um, that would be set with this bill. Yeah, we are not gonna start at 50% right away, but we have a starting point with this bill versus now there is no floor, there's no floor. But this bill offers a floor and we can move up. So many people talk about how this is watered down and all of us that say anything good about this bill, we're just pushovers and we're basically selling out the industry. That is not the case. This bill is a starting point. You have to start somewhere. You cannot start at the top. That will never work. The analysis concluded 
stating that an additional 2.3 million head of cattle would be required to be marketed through a negotiated framework if the Cattle Price Discovery and Transparency Act of 2022 were to pass. This number is compared to if there was no intervention to increase negotiated cash trade. This number is considerably less than what the original bill would have required, but it would still place a significant burden on the southern states, excuse me, on the southern plains to trade more cash fed cattle. So again, it will be interesting to see what happens with the hearing today and then also tomorrow. I will keep you updated as information comes from both of those hearings in the House and the Senate. This update is also sponsored by 4T Ag Insurance, your go-to contractor for ag insurance. The folks at 4T Ag are dedicated to providing you with insight, information, and alternative risk solutions that are custom fit to your business and personal needs. They offer both drought and crop insurance, and they also offer LRPs for fed and feeder cattle. If you'd like more information, go ahead and check out their website, 4TAG.net. That is the number 4, T-A-G. Net. The Associated Press has reported that high winds and incredibly dry conditions set the stage for another day of wildfires here in Nebraska this past weekend. On Friday, John Trumbull, 66 of Arapaho, was working with firefighter, excuse me, was working with firefighters on a fire that eventually burned more than 78 square miles in Red Willow, Furnace, and Frontier counties by Sunday afternoon. While serving as a spotter on Friday in Red Willow County, Trumbull was overcome by smoke and fire after his vehicle left the road due to poor visibility because of dust and smoke. His body was found early on Saturday morning. In the past month, since wildfires have become a common theme here in Nebraska, at least 15 firefighters have been injured battling the blazes. Just since this past Friday, 14 counties here in Nebraska reported wildfires. Some of those counties include my home county, Blaine County, Cherry, Brown, Scotts Bluff, and Butler County. As of Sunday afternoon, those fires had either been extinguished or were mostly contained. The exact number of, uh, the exact number of burned acres by all of these fires and the number of homes and structure, structures destroys structures destroyed, excuse me, has yet to be determined. It was reported that the fire in Butler County, which is in eastern Nebraska near Rising City, killed roughly 100 calves that were being housed in calving sheds and at least fire trucks and at least three fire trucks were damaged or destroyed in those fires. Nebraska isn't the only state suffering from wildfires. Down in New Mexico, 20 wildfires continued to burn on Sunday, including one fire that had grown to consume 84 square miles of land. And finally, Drovers and Tri-State Livestock News has reported that an ongoing investigation in Montana has revealed a Canadian company has stolen up to $5 million from Montanans after receiving payments but never delivering on the promised product. Montana's Attorney General Austin Knudsen has warned there might be other criminals conducting similar scams. New Way Ag, a Canadian company, promised grain hay, barley straw, and wheat straw at low prices to quickly make sales. Then they went ahead and collected payments, but they never delivered any product to their customers. To aid in the investigation, Montanans who made payments to New Way Ag should contact the Montana Office of Consumer Protection at 406-444-4500. That is all I have for you guys this morning. I hope everyone's week is off to a great start. Have yourself a tremendous Tuesday. I'll catch you later.